In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these awesome Sector Mechanicus bases really, really pop with simple techniques in just a couple of minutes. Look at these Sector Mechanicus, gorgeous, gorgeous texture on these bases, screaming out for some dry brushing and washing action. Literally just a couple of minutes per base. A few creative techniques, we've actually used some chipping fluids on there and some washing and some metallic paints and you are good to go. This is a really fun one, it's a really fast one super effective great result um, if you like them please let us know please comment please hit that bell notification and subscribe to be notified for future content and do let us know down in the comments below what you'd like to see next we do do a monthly giveaway for the best or most helpful almost funny comment so whatever you're thinking just pop it below right it's a fast one let's jump in for our base number one which is going to be our gold base we're using retributorama and we're going to be mixing that with gimbal brown this will be a familiar mixture to a lot of regular watches and even over black this should pretty much instantly cover. You can smush it, you can stipple it, you can do it in a couple of layers of dry brushed, uh, which is what I'm gonna be doing, and then we'll move on to our highlights. So as far as the highlights go, I'm just going to pure retributor. It's really important to pick the right paints. Um, I end up using the same paints a lot, very regularly on this channel, and the reason is that I'm picking ones that I know are gonna work with me on whatever I'm working on, and do that without giving me any issues. So we're getting a little bit of Vallejo game silver. Right, there we go. Initial dry brush and then a final one with a slightly higher proportion. I'm mixing it on the same area of my palette as I've got my previous paint. And we're already looking great. So that is the foundation for our gold. Slap down super quick. Look at that, gorgeous. So moving swiftly on to our silver, um, we're gonna be mixing Vallejo Gamer Silver that we've used previously and with Vallejo's 950 Black and because we are going to be rusting a little bit here we're not doing shiny floors I'm going to mix in a little of that brown just to add a kind of a, um, a helpfully present amount of age to what we're doing here look at that <laughs> this is a joke isn't it there we go that's the fastest base coat I've ever done in my life you can see that I've Use my dampening pad to remove a lot of the excess uh, paint from the previous stage. That's not only important for achieving a nice high level paint job here, it's also really useful kind of for kind of ongoing brush maintenance and just keeping your brushes in perfect condition. So I'm going to remove a lot of the excess off here. I do want this to be kind of a, a, a final edge highlight. And then gently, I'm going to use this to buff up that area. So it won't be immediately apparent, but especially when we put a wash down, it's worth having a much brighter set of edges on our base. All right, shiny silver done. Here I have AK's Heavy Chipping Fluid. This is a wonder product as far as I'm concerned. Got a big brush, one of our size fours, and I'm just splashing it down on the areas that I'm gonna be turning uh, our bright turquoise shortly. Otherwise, I'm going for a turquoise. Surprise, surprise. I've not done this on the channel for a while. Now for weathering this stuff, take off your masking tape, which is the most satisfying and potentially worrying thing in the world. There we go. Lovely clean lines. Look at that. Obviously, we can clean up the very edges of these base, the actual rims, as easily as we need to. Now, the next step is to get a brush that has seen better days. You want kind of a, a scrubby acrylic one. This, you don't require like any, any precision here. In fact, you want something that is a little bit too rough. And then what I'm going to be doing is just adding a little bit of water. using that to scrub these back now because you're removing the paint it can be quite difficult to see whether what you've done has had an effect um, I tend to kind of just end up wiping these off with a finger something like that and under there what you'll see is we've actually got very very realistic weathering I have got 
some Doomball Brown on my palette. I've got some of the Vallejo Black and I'm just gonna be mixing up kind of light watery washes of those using a nice big brush using one of our size fours. And essentially I'm gonna go through three quick stages or two quick stages, which will involve putting down a dark wash initially. Um, so one with more of the black in or um, more of this brown. And then the following stages will just be lighter versions. Do make sure you let these dry between the stages and it's up to you how heavy you wanna use these. Um, don't worry about things being too precise. The one thing that I would say is make sure in these recess sections that you uh, keep it as a wash, so watery, unlike I've done there. But any areas that wouldn't have been hit by the paint because of the deep recesses when we're dry brushing, make sure that you do fill those with paint because it'll just make things kind of look a little bit more coherent. So our gold base, I'm just hitting with a straight Doombo wash. Uh, one of the reasons to be using a nice high quality brush for this is that it is actually sometimes quite helpful to be able to make sure that you do get things in the recesses without kind of using some old shabby uh, splayed brush that you reserve for washes. We're just using a wash made out of paints here, so as long as you wash your brush afterwards, um, things should end up absolutely fine and it gives you that slightly higher degree of control. So following our Doombo, we are gonna be going through Scrag Brown and Charles Slayer Orange. I'll show you on this base. You can use it on the others if you wish. Uh, if you wanna just keep them in the kind of strictly uh, more black and white, less rusty, um, new but um, like new but tarnished metal or old metal, but it's not rusted, and that's entirely up to you. Now it is of course entirely up to you when you highlight your bases. And what is worth bearing in mind here is basically a final highlight at the end, a final final highlight, that will give you a really crisp, bright, noticeable end result. Those scratches will look fresh, those buffs will look crisp and shiny. And if you do it uh, before you do final highlights, uh, what you get is you get the chance to kind of filter those down with a wash or any other techniques that you're using or even some layering or something like that and you're just going to knock them back a little so this base here um, if I were to leave like this you get super shiny edges but if we're going to be doing any final stages then this just allows me to nip in there before then do something that's going to give us some high contrast but then knock it back slightly with our following rust stages. So having done what is going to be our last stage of highlighting on that base as I said, we just get the opportunity to kind of knock those highlights back a little with our subsequent worsting stages. So I'm gonna have the same stuff on these bases, it's just gonna have been done in a different order and that can make a really big difference to the final results that you achieve while painting. All of these bases are now at a stage where we can jump through to the Troll Slayer wash stage and that is where we pull in a huge amount of vibrancy and contrast and uh, kind of interestingly one of the things about doing rusting like this is you get to put in the recesses which normally would be super dark and will naturally be super dark because they've not been hit by our highlights so you do get a really punchy amount of contrast. Of course, all these detailing stages are entirely optional, but this one is definitely more optional. I've mixed some fluorescent yellow from Vallejo Game Color with some Troll Slayer Orange, and what I've done is I've jumped right down to a teeny tiny brush. This is our triple zero, and what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be enhancing the details that I've got here because I really like the effect that we've got of this kind of rusty fade toward those central areas. So just to push them even further, Jumping to a smaller brush allows a lot more control, a lot more specificity in terms of where you are putting those highlights. Um, it does mean you're gonna have to go back to the palette more, which is one of the joys of the big brushes. So I'm just using this on this one base to really push the level of contrast that we've got and just how vibrant that orange is. Okay, so as far as final highlights go, start with gold first. Retributor. And of course, we're gonna be mixing in a little bit of our favorite silver in the world. To be done carefully, we don't wanna 
and disturb any of the nice detailing that we've done. And as you'll see here, I'm doing this with quite a careful stage of buffing. Brilliant. So all that remains for us to finish these off is to hit them with a little bit of the same Vallejo matte black that we used in our first stage. Diluted this slightly, I'm just using a size one and if you're not particularly confident with running details next to your beautifully painted bases then I'd use an edge highlighting technique like I'm using here which allows you to go right up to the edges without any risk of kind of overspilling. All you have to make sure is that you don't have a huge amount of paint on your brush because that could seep over. It's a little bit slower, but it's a great way to avoid making any mistakes to ruin your hard work. And we are done. Look at those. Look at the pop that you get off those, especially this one here. This has turned out really, really, really nicely. Look at that. Look at the levels of interest you got. That part of what makes this great is the shape, kind of that central ring within the uh, within the parameters of the base. Looks really, really nice. I want to take you through uh, where I see um, kind of the different ways that you could paint these bases coming into play. So I talk a lot about contrast in other tutorials of uh, both uh, warm colors, cold colors, stuff like that. Now, if you've got someone that you want to set in a warm environment, uh, then using those browns is a really, really good way to go about it. However, if you do want to keep it a little bit cooler, you can just knock the browns out of the spectrum, and just use blacks and you end up with a really high amount of contrast. And you, rather than adding uh, doom ball into that black stage you could add a deep blue in there there's nothing wrong with putting a bit of cool steel in particularly if you've got kind of the turquoises over the rest of the base uh, like we have on this one if you imagine that one instead of orange in the recesses we just had a really really deep blue you'd end up with blue steel and then um, the turquoise it's up to you how much of it you knock off I left mine barely any time at all so quite a bit was removed over that chipping fluid if you leave it there for longer and brush it more lightly more of it will remain on it. So you could end up with a really cool hued base and really fantastic end result. These two, we've gone for a much warmer, that's just kind of conventional, rusty, you know what you're getting, but that could, you could paint them completely neutrally, just in a, like involving no colors whatsoever, just putting some black in there, some black washes down, repeating your metallics for those final highlights and having a really poppy, sharp final step. Or you can mix in the middle, um, playing around with it on a bronzy one. Equally, rather than doing an orange wash on this bronze, you could use those colors that we use for the verdigris strips on it, and you could wash them all over that base because if it being a goldy coppery color, it would uh, age in different ways. You can get away with pretty much whatever you want with metallics, they could be an alloy, it's fine. You know, it's the future, you can guess at uh, whatever makes things look the coolest. So thank you very much for watching the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you in the next tutorial.